Yo, what's going on everybody? It's iPod King Carter here, the super man of YouTube. In this game, this is the 29th game of my career against the Philadelphia 76ers. But in this video, I'm not going to be going over highlights with you guys. I actually want to touch on a few ideas that a couple people had about patches that need to come out for NBA 2K13. Now, I know that the game hasn't been out for a full month yet. And I know a lot of people still are loving the game. Trust me, the game, it isn't all bad, but... There are the little things that matter that makes the game great, and this game is missing them. Now, all of these ideas are of course not mine. I will be giving credit to the people as I go along. But I first want to address Ronnie2k, LD2k, at 2K Sports, and all of the devs. We appreciate the game, don't get me wrong. Ronnie2k and LD2k, I know you guys are the face of marketing, so I know you guys get burned a lot by players that want certain things in this game. We know that the game's not complete, we know it has glitches, we know that some of the gameplay isn't fully, you know, up to par, and some of the little things matter. Now, I know you guys' name is in the title, I know a lot of people have been sending this video to you, but we want this video to get out. Now, the first thing that I'm going to go over, I want to give credit to, I'm just, I'm going to spell his name out. I'm not actually going to say it because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> this is his Twitter name. It's at R-I-S-H-I underscore P-A-N-D-Y-A. I, I told you, I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but this is what he wants. He wants better on ball defense. He says, great shooters tend to be left open because the defender tends to sag off. Now, we all know in NBA 2K13, three-point shots are like cake, <laughs> really. The next thing is, he wants three-point shot percentages to be lowered like they did last year in NBA 2K12. Also, he wants to all like all around percentages of shots lowered, such as mid range jump shots, layups, dunks, close range shots, under the in the paint shots, up and unders. He wants all types of shots percentages lowered as well. He, I guess, he wants the game to be more realistic. If a team is shooting 80%, that's out, that's out of line. <laughs> that's basically what he's saying. He's saying 80% shooting from the field for a team is just outrageous. He wants that to be lowered. The next thing is. Contested shots need to be lowered to where people can only make them if they're a superstar or with a signature skill that helps them to do so. This should be more than last year, but less than right now. Now, what he means by that is contested shots in NBA 2K12, you weren't getting them off. You weren't going to make them, and you were just going to be raging the entire time. But this year, you seem to be making everything and not missing anything. So it kind of doesn't make it realistic. It makes it more of an arcade game. Now, he tried to specify on this saying that big men should be most affected with this when taking mid-range shots, such as when you're a center in the league and you're not someone like Yao Ming, your mid-range jump shot isn't really that great. So, when you're getting contested, you shouldn't be making every shot. It's that simple. The next thing is, this. now this is a big thing in my mind, less offensive rebounds. And the reason why I say this is, Offensive rebounds are out of hand. They've been out of hand for years now with, with 2K. But he says that this can be fixed with more boxing out and less of an animation where the ball bounces out of your hands as you're about to grab the rebound. Now, we all know this. You jump up. You grab the rebound. You you think you have it. The, the actual commentator says your name with the rebound, but they have the offensive rebound, and they're going back up for a dunk. It's that simple. The next thing is, he said, having a high defensive team rating should matter. And this is why. When you're playing a good defense, contest more shots, block more shots, playing past the lane, stand in front of the ball handler, and playing with teams with high defensive ratings such as the Bulls should mean that the score should stay low, such as 75 to about 90 points most of the time. He said this should also make more open shots miss as well. Now, I'm guessing that he wanted to go simulation route with that, but we'll get into that a little bit later. He said, this will make people value a high defensive ranked team over a high ranked offensive team. Now, this is the one thing. When it comes to offensive and defensive teams, which one outweighs the other? Would you rather play with the Thunder or would you rather play with the Bulls? You have to pick your poison. Now, this is another thing that he said should go about that with everything that he just went over. If a team has a high offensive ranking, then the team should have a better chance of making open and contested shots against high defensive teams, as mentioned above. 
Now, I wouldn't totally believe that because if you have a powerhouse team like the Heat with DeJuan, with um, D. Wade and LeBron, that doesn't mean that everybody else on the team should be making contested shots such as they do because those other players aren't superstars. So, with that being said, I think that if you have a high offensive rank team, any player on that team that happens to be a superstar or has the skill sets to make that player score should have an easier time getting to the rack, shooting open three-pointers, shooting mid-range jump shots, opposed to those role players. Now, the next thing, coach ratings. Now, I kind of like this idea. He said, if your team is ranked at A in either offense, defense, teaching, or potential, then the players on that team should get a plus five boost in attributes related to that category. Now, he said, if there's a B, then plus four. If a C, plus two. And no boost for Ds or Fs. He said, same thing with assistant coaches. If it's an A, then plus two. If it's a B or C, then plus one. And no boost for D or F as well. Now, the next thing that he wants to move into is the lag on jump shots. He also wants to know how releases are early. Such as, um, I have Kevin Durant shot. Sometimes when I shoot the ball, they say too early. Sometimes they say too late. And it really never looks that perfect as it flows off of my hand. Now, a couple people might look at this and say, oh, well, you know, it's just a little minor thing. But sometimes it's a big thing because we love the way our jump shots look, the way it responds to us using the shot stick or even when you shoot with X or, or square for PS3. But he said, for example, for Marcus Camby's shot, there is no way whatsoever to get a perfect or even late release. Try it. So if you're listening to this video right now, go into any game, go grab Marcus Camby real quick and go and try practice mode and try to get a couple shots off. Now, he said that there's a glitch where if you create a Nike ID shoe and equip it to your player, my player or not, the shoe glitches and turns into like LeBron 7s. Now, go inside, try to create a Nike ID shoe, equip it with your player and see what it looks like and see if you can actually play with it in my career or blacktop, whatever you choose. They also want more options for the GM sit down like if a team's record doesn't improve, then I'm not sure about my future here. I'm guessing that that's an option as if you want to get a trade or not, but I'm really not sure. My team so far in my career is doing pretty good, so I haven't really had too many GM sit downs asking for a trade or demanding anything. So if he says that that option is not there, then we will have to believe what he says. Another thing is a glitch with the Dime Magazine endorsement where the cover is about to give him a seizure and he said that he'll send me a screenshot of it and you can look at that screenshot right now all right now moving on to the next one he said rating fixes on some players like anthony davis vertical is in the 60s now me myself i think anthony davis deserves a higher vertical than 60 right so go inside of rosters. Hopefully, you know, when the NBA starts, they'll hopefully update the roster and give him a higher vertical for that rating. But as of right now, he never has played an NBA game. It probably can't go off of too much, but I think it deserves more than a 60. Now, he said he doesn't know if he already... If they don't already have this in the works, but if you have the lockdown defender signature skill, then contesting a shot should bring the chance of the shot falling. What he was probably trying to say is, if you have the lockdown defender signature skill and you're supposed to make that player uh, all of his skills or something, what, something like that fall, I think that you should be able to contest shots a whole lot easier. You should always have your hand up. You should not be able to let that player go to you know, left or right or through you. And even when that person shoots the ball, you should be right there in their face contesting their shot and making their their percentage of that shot or that chance of that shot going down. Now, uh, the next thing he did, he wanted to go over was no pause when a rebound is about to come down. He said, go check in the game. You'll see that everyone on the court pauses when a rebound is about to come down, which means he's probably saying that when you're going up for a rebound, that all the players just stand there and anticipate just one player to grab it instead of boxing out, staying active during that rebound play. 
The next thing is, you should be able to go on your offensive, re go for your own offensive rebound. I'm guessing he's trying to say, right now you can't because if you press square on PS3 immediately after missing a shot, you can't go up for the rebound. So what I'm guessing he's trying to say is, if you go up for a layup and you get it blocked or it's, it's, it's around the cylinder or something like that, you may be stuck in an animation opposed to you being able to shoot the ball and immediately after the shooting animation is over, jump up and go for the ball. I haven't had too many problems with that because I don't really need to go up for my own rebounds. Most of the time when I'm going up for layups or dunks, I'm either making them or I'm getting bumped to is where I'm not even in the play anymore. Now, <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, moving on to the next one. These these credits are to NYC the future, and he also said that Rishi also said that he put a little bit of input on some, but for the most part, NYC the future, these are his ideas. Now, he wants the ability to save a custom playbook, coach settings, and presentation for all online games. Now, that's a very big thing, 2K. People with playbooks love to actually have their playbooks work. <laughs> um, I don't know if, you know, the play vision is fixed and things of that nature, but we'll get into that later. But for the most part, custom playbooks, coach settings, and presentations for all online games. They also want better sliders, especially simulation. Now, I've played on default. I've played on simulation. I really don't see that much of a difference this year opposed to NBA 2K12. In NBA 2K12, with default, I can make anything. With simulation, all I can do is dunk on people because I would not be able to shoot the ball at all. Now, he also wants a better ranking system. Now, the next thing he wants is less on-ball steals. Now, we all know this, pickpocketer. That's a big signature skill that a lot of people like to grab, and a lot of people love to spam that steal button. Now, I've played a lot of blacktop online, and I can attest to that. When somebody steps spams on that steal ball, and you don't have no fouls being called, it's no way in hell that you can get away from that. You get locked in the animation, and it's cookies all day long. Trust me, I've seen it. The next thing, blocking fouls should be called when a player forces you out of bounds, especially the sideline and into the backcourt. Now, I can attest to that as well. When I'm playing with my point guard and the pressure is on and I need to clear that eight seconds and a player is holding me back, if for any reason I decide to take the sideline and he pushes me out of bounds, it's an instant turnover. It's no foul call. And, and, and let's talk about the fouls real fast. I barely see any fouls called in the game. And I'm, I'm just keeping it being, but we'll get into my ideas a little bit later. We're just go, I'm, go, I'm still going over these. Now, the next thing is better online leaderboards, overall ranking, ranking lobbies, etc., rather than top 100 offense and defense. Now, I'm guessing that he wants a better leaderboard such as something like the one we had in NBA 2K9. The one in NBA 2K9 worked out a little bit better than the one that we have currently. Now, the next thing is just, he said that it should say what your rank is if you're like 25,000. Now, I don't know what that necessarily means. I'm guessing he's saying that if you're up there in the rankings such as your win-loss ratio and you're high up there, it should give you something like a certain emblem or something like that, such as, you know, something probably like Call of Duty. You should have your own entitled name or something like that, most likely. Okay, and the next thing is credited to Dread Silver. Now, Dread Silver said that he wanted true rankings for NBA 2K13. Now, I'm not sure if it's the same online ranking such as what NYC The Future wanted or if he wanted better roster rankings such as the players for his associations and things of that nature. Not truly sure. But those ideas are from all those guys. Um, now, I know we have a lot of time left in this video, so I'm going to go over a few things with y'all. Now, the first thing. When my career comes on and you start your career up, I would just want to know why is it so hard to get an A+. Plus? Now, I think that with the patch that you guys are going to be coming out with or the numerous amount of patches that you're going to be coming out with, I think that when you call for a double team, your player should not move like he's stuck in quicksand. Another thing, when you call for a pick and you're not in a vicinity, both of your teammates should go and engage that pick. When you call for a pick and you expect your teammates to go set a pick, they do not. 
and it was in the game last year for NBA 2K12. I don't know why it's not in this year's game. I, I don't understand it. And the next thing, when you're running with the ball on a fast break, do you ever notice that a point guard will catch up to you much faster than, of course, a shooting guard, small forward, or power forward to center, but you should already have probably about five or six steps on a player and they just automatically catch you because there seems to be three different animations when running with the ball. There's a speed burst where you throw the ball out in front of you and you, I guess you, you know your legs start moving a little bit faster but then it's like a, a pant where you're bouncing the ball but you're swinging both of your arms and you seem to be stuck in quicksand and I don't know why that is but you don't move any faster. The next thing when it comes to shooting. Now on defensive sliders when I have my shot time and feedback on you can see everything but when I'm on simulation it looks like all three symbols early, perfect and late are shined and you don't know if your shot was perfect, you don't know if it was early and you don't know if it was late. <laughs> I still don't truly understand that. The next thing you guys need to patch, the dunking. The dunking itself is crazy. It is out of this world. When I'm playing blacktop, if a person starts an animation for dunking, you might as well forget about it. You're not going to stop it. And your whole entire three team of three are going to be getting dunked on if everybody can test that shot. It's that simple. You guys definitely need to patch the dunking. The next thing, I'm going to be jumping into passing. Now, this is the reason. When I played NBA 2K13 and San Fran or Nevada, whatever you want to call it, before this game came out, the passing was semi-perfect. The bounce passes worked to perfection. The icon passes were working more smooth. And another thing, when you pass it into the paint, the ball wasn't getting tipped as much as it is in this game. And even with alley-oops, me throwing alley-oops nowadays, I have 90 pass, and for some reason, they still able to tip it out of midair. Now, with that being said, it's something that Shakedown 2012 said. He said that the ball should be quicker than the eye. No, no, actually, he said the eye is quicker than the ball, but the ball should be quicker than the hand. I think that's the right saying. I'm not too sure, but what he was basically trying to say is if a person throws a pass, of course you want to react to it, but it takes a split millisecond for you to respond to somebody actually throwing a pass. The computer should not know what you're doing before you do it. So, if I'm on a fast break and I throw a bounce pass, there should be no reason why a player that's backing up, literally backpedaling, be able to tip a pass from a bounce pass that's completely behind him or even go directly into the paint and wait for a person that's at, that's about to catch an alley while I'm sitting at the top of the key about to shoot in their face. Most of the time, I don't throw alley-oops. What I do is I just pull up for a mid-range jumper because I know what the computer is going to do. They're going to go in the paint and they're going to try to take the pass out of midair. Now the next thing, the layups. Now, when it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, the layups are perfectly fine. But when you're going up against a bunch of people and you get hit by maybe one guy or two guys, that should be called a foul. There's no reason why I should get demolished by three players that all slid into the paint to help out on defense and not one person foul me while in the animation that I get, I get an animation like I got my head took off, but I throw up a shot and either I get it blocked or somehow the ball hits the rim and they're just going down the other end of the court. The next thing, the dribbling moves. I love the dribble stick. Don't get me wrong, the dribble stick is great. But I think that some of the moves that have been done, they should take a whole lot more stamina than they currently do. Because I've seen somebody pull off a series of moves and still get to the middle of the paint and do another series of moves and still get to the rim without the ball either falling off of them, them losing the ball due to lack of stamina, or somebody tipping the ball for a steal okay and what do I got next on my list oh we definitely got to talk about the all-star glitch thing now um, I know a lot of people touched on this all-star glitch me myself 
I'm not going to tell you guys what happened to me and my player when I went to the All-Star Weekend, but a lot of people have been experiencing glitch after they win the dunk contest, lose the dunk contest, or even just get through the All-Star Weekend. It automatically sends them to the offseason. I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't know if 2K is going to fix it, how soon it's going to take, but you guys definitely want to fix that because that's basically a progression issue. You guys said that you guys came up with a patch, and you guys fix the progression issue where people going to get past one game. Now you have a problem later down the road where if you play the All-Star game, you can't play any games until you get to the playoffs. And what if your team doesn't make the playoffs? Does it send you to the next season? I'm really not sure how that goes. The next thing is, you guys have to bring back the uh, shot time and feedback. I mean, not shot time and feedback, but the actual uh, seconds on the clock for shooting free throws. A lot of us players that play on Hall of Fame used to love that that was our way of showing people that we played on Hall of Fame, we were playing on the hardest difficulty, and still winning the game, opposed to there not being a clock there and people having to question you all the time, what difficulty do you play on instead of having the proof in the pudding. I would definitely love it if you guys put the shot timer back there for free throws. That's just a personal thing on my own notion. I really need that in my life. Okay, the next thing. When it comes to VC, we got you guys already know the problem where your VC may have switched the skill points. There should have been a patch that came out the next day with this problem. Now, you want to know why? I know a few people that pay for VC. And I feel they're paying. You want to know why? They pay for VC. They put it to a my player. Then that my player got glitched out. And before they can use the VC that they've actually paid for, they all switch the skill points. So now instead of them wanting to play with the my player and build their my player up the right way, they have to start their my players all over, buy more VC, and do it all over again. Me, myself, I don't have that problem. I have an Ethernet connection. I pay my bills on time. And I never played offline with any of my mod players, ever. All of my VC is still stacked. I'm good. And I'm sorry. That's just the way that things roll. But you guys definitely need to fix that, man. That's a very big thing. A lot of people. And one bad thing about this Ronnie 2K. I know that you were only trying to help. But please. Don't ever say that you guys can call a tech team and they'll be able to help you with your problem. And all they do is say, start your my player over. That hurts. <laughs> that hurts a lot of people because those people that pay that money want to know, can they get that money back? And when you tell them no, they're like, well, why did I even buy this game? Why did I spend that extra money? It contradicts what you guys are trying to do here. The next thing. This is one thing that I want to get patched for my career. When it comes to the shooting, I will say this. I like what you guys have done. You have made the shooting a lot better. The momentum shots look good. The fadeaway shots, the actual post fades and shimmies and things of that nature look very good. But when it comes to the actual sag off and an aggressive D and things of that nature, you guys should have given us an option inside of my career to turn the sag on, turn it off, turn aggressive D on, contest all shots on, deny ball on. You guys really should have gave us that panel. The D-pad still has buttons left to use. You guys can definitely integrate that into the game. Just give us that option. We would love to let our players sag off if we have a 20-point lead, of course. Of course, we would love to play aggressive half-court press when we're down 10. Of course. We would love to deny the ball in a full-court press if we're down 20. We would love to do that. So with that being said, please, please put that in the game because that's what basketball players want. And as a point guard, I've noticed I've been able to call plays. But I haven't been able to call real life plays because the play vision is messed up. The play vision is not complete. It does not work. And all I have to do is rely on me doing my own thing on isolation. That's it. I, I can't rely on my teammates to make shots from a play because the play doesn't develop in time. Or I don't see the play vision and I don't know where to begin. 
Now another thing, with the signature skills, I like the signature skills, don't get me wrong, but I think that only five signature skills is a little bit too shabby. Now I know that you guys give us more slots to purchase, so why don't you give us every single slot that we can purchase to our signature skills at one time? You know, I like that you guys gave us five, but I would like to have all of them. <laughs> you know, I would I would love to have Gatorade along with all of my other their signature skills. I would love to have the coaches along with Floor General, Dimer, Alleyuper, Ankle Breaker, Shot Creator, Microwave, Heat Retention, Data. I would. I'm sorry, my bad, my bad. That that was a little rant, but I would love to have all of those signature skills opposed to just you know five ones that we have to build up. Now another thing, the up and unders. I noticed that the up and unders still are cheese. They still work amazingly. They're like a hundred percent. It doesn't matter how many times you try to jump for the block. If a person goes for an up and under, they can up and under you all game long. I've rarely seen a travel in this game. You might have seen a travel earlier in this gameplay, but me myself, if I'm doing an up and under, I can up and under a guy all day long. I can give him head fakes for days until I get a three seconds call. <laughs> But you guys definitely have to patch that. Now another thing. I noticed that you guys have people being able to follow their shots. But if you're playing my career and you have the computer shooting and he's wide open. Why does that computer have to follow his own shot? Let him shoot his regular jump shot and let him make it. Because I've noticed that if a person tries to follow their jump shot. They rarely make it opposed to if they shot the jump shot regularly, they would make it, of course. Now, what else should I be able to touch on in there? Oh, let's move on to Blacktop. Man, I have a lot to talk about about Blacktop. Luckily, you know, we don't have that much time left, but let me jump into this. Whew. First thing, I love the bling bling. I will say that I love the bling bling, but... For them to give you a plus 10 in every attribute is crazy. I love it for designer purposes only, but not to give you plus 10. Because what I did was I actually played a My Career game. And I noticed that I was a 97 overall. And I was like, how in the hell did I get to a 97 overall? I don't remember putting up all of my attributes that much. You know, I didn't have that much VC. And come to find out, I remember when I purchased the Bling Bling... I was like, oh, it gave you a plus 10 in every attribute. So please, take that off. <laughs> the next thing, when you're playing blacktop, I believe that there should be calls, calls for fouls. Now, the reason why I say this is I think that they should be different scoring, how should I say, caps. Such as, you know, a game of 21 is great, don't get me wrong. But we should be able to go to 48. 50, 100, 35, different numbers because of foul calls. Now, I don't say that we should be able to shoot free throws. Maybe one shot. What's one shot? One shot could do you some good. Also, I think that we should be able to change it to two points and three points, such as if we wanted to go to a higher score. Another thing is, I'm liking a 40 um, second shot clock, but I think that 24 seconds should do it. You guys shouldn't give us 40 seconds to lounge around and just sit there with the ball in our hands while we do nothing. Another thing is, I would love it if you broke it up into quarters and make Blacktop more of uh, my player Blacktop online like it was last year. I would love the four quarters effect because then it would give it more of a team feel. I know it's only three on three and I know you can't make it full court, but give us a timer. Give us a timer on the game. It, it would feel a whole lot better. Now, let's jump into the gameplay. Now, this is one thing I hate. When you check the ball to somebody, they can automatically shoot the ball. I think that when you give a person the ball, they have to change the order of possession at least once, which means they have to give off a pass at least once before the ball can be shot. Because if you're up 20 to 19 and you know that all you need is a stop and you guys need one point to get the win and you have a 99 overall brought by VC, and you check him the ball, and he says, oh, this dude is sagging off. <laughs> Swags off, fag sauce. I'm, I'm being real rap right now. That That's the worst feeling in the world. When you know you have the game in your team's hands, 
and the person just pulls for three and it's cash. That's the worst feeling in the world. So please put that in a game where the ball at least has to touch one person's hands other than the person that you checked it to in order to score. Another thing, like the percentage of shots like the guy said earlier. When it comes to dunking, it's horrendous. I would love it if you guys please, please fix the dunking. Because it's like I said, as soon as you get into an animation, it cannot be stopped. You literally have to bump a person before they even think about pressing R, T, and X. That's real rap. I would love it if you guys please fix that. That would be so great. I would definitely love it. Another thing, the spin moves and, you know, the dribbling. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I said I loved it before. But in blacktop mode, there are no foul calls. This is why I want fouls. When a person is spamming on that steal button and there's nothing that you can do, you get frustrated with the game. And me, myself, I hate it when a person spams because I'm a dribbler. I like to get to the rack. I like to use my creativity to get past defenders. Now, if a person is just spamming a steal button and they're like, oh, this ball ain't getting past me. And I hit him with a behind the back and they spam the steal button and I get bumped. And then I lose the ball. That should have been a foul, right? That should have been a reaching foul. But since there's no cause, nothing happens. Now, another thing I've noticed, the spin moves in this game. I know that the ball is live, but the spin moves that are kind of erratic and you place the ball out there, you get bumped a lot. I think that it should be some type of call of kickball or some type of violation that happens when a person is actually going in and just spamming the steal or being in the vicinity of your dribbles because you're supposed to be able to get past that person. Now the next thing, when a person is checking the ball, one of the other offensive players has some type of way, excuse me, of standing in the way of you checking the ball. So if you check the ball, it can actually touch that player and you can get it back and run in the paint and get a dunk or another defensive player can touch the ball. It should always be, if you're checking the ball, a person on the opposite team, which is the person you're checking it to, has to be able to touch the ball as well as the defensive players respecting the line while you're checking the ball. I would love that. Now, another thing I want to touch on is the actual system of your win-loss ratio. Now, there's a lot of games that I've won on my player blacktop, but have they been counted for wins? No. They've actually been counted for losses and that there's nothing that I can do. And I've actually sat down, thought about it, and was like, you know what? Here we go. This is what I'm going to do from now and on. I'm just going to be playing blacktop my player private matches instead of going into the public lobbies and winning and getting an L for it. Now you can, I can give you guys a bunch of proof of me getting a win, but you can't call it because 2K servers are going to tell you that you took the L. Now the last thing that I wanted to get into that you guys need to patch, you guys got to patch the scoreboard <laughs> in public matches, online ranked matches, on games against friends. You guys.